John Cheska, welcome right here at the Los Angeles Times Festival of Books. And we're here to talk today, we're gonna to talk about a lot of things. We're here today to talk about your Frank Einstein books. This is a new series nice. for you. Nice. Yeah, you've got yeah. a couple. The, elect, the new one is the, and the Electro Finger, but you've got and the anti, Antimatter Motor. Yes. These this, are really fun. This is all true science. This is all, you, you'll be a genius after you read a couple of these. So what's the genesis of these books? I mean, you're, all your books sort of have a different angle that you come from, but what's the genius? Yeah, you know, a lot of my stuff comes out of having been a teacher for 10 years. I was an elementary school teacher. Uh, and I taught science and math, uh, never English, weirdly enough. But I always kind of have that in the back of my head. like, and, and I love stuff like science or history. Say all the Time Warp Trio books were about kids traveling around in history. And this is kind of the science version. Yeah. You have a new uh, illustrator. I don't know if you ever worked with Brian before. No, I hadn't. But I met him through my agent uh, and just kind of like his combination um, of narrative illustration. And then in these books in particular, we also use diagrams. Yeah. So it's kind of half and half, real hardcore diagrams of real science. So it had to be a guy who could do both. Yeah, so the, tell me the, the idea of science and, and drawing people in. You're, yeah. you're very good at getting kids, a lot of young boys too, yeah, into yeah. reading, yeah. which is a really important thing for you. What is it about the science combination that you feel will maybe kind of project them even further? Well, it's that same thing like reading, like it's a difficult subject in a lot of ways, or history. Maybe kids don't know how cool some of the stories of history are. And it's been my experience from teaching is you don't lecture and don't tell kids like, this is gonna be so exciting. Yeah. I mean, just cut right to it. Like yeah. have Genghis Khan cutting somebody's head off. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> or like have the really cool things of science yeah. that you can shock somebody's nose with static electricity and it's the same as lightning. Yeah. And that that can be changed to magnetism. I mean, there's just mind blowing stuff. Well, in truck town, it's the same thing where you go and you, yeah. you pull in these kids who love these things. I yeah. mean, there's this whole thing out there that, and of course they're gonna find a book it's for them, that it feels like it's written for That's them. That's absolutely, yeah. was the truck town idea was to grip those little guys when they were just coming into school, like preschool, kindergarten. Because I grew up with five brothers. I mean, we're all nuts about just vehicles and trucks. My dad would take us to construction sites and leave us there for like oh, yeah. a couple hours. It was the 60s, so it was okay. Um, and we would just be hypnotized. So that was that same idea. Have a kid just be so crazy for that thing, he'd want to read about it. And so these, the, the way you speak about these subjects is obvious uh, that you have a love, obviously, for reading and for getting yeah. people involved. It's a really big, important mission for you. And that's why one of the reasons why they made you the national ambassador for young people's literature, which was <laughs> you were the first. Well, that and I look good with a medal, too. Yeah. I should have brought my medal in my sash. But you joke about <laughs> it, but it's an official position now. The yeah. librarian of Congress, and it's like a big deal now. Well, it's kind of cool. When yeah. they first called me, I honestly thought it was Lane Smith or somebody prank calling me. Yeah. They said, you want to be the ambassador? <laughs> I also think you're calling the wrong person. So I what think does it meant... entail? What did it mean for you to do besides being able to like walk around like king of the forest? But I mean, yeah. besides that, what yeah. did they have you doing? Well, it was exactly that, like just the perception of it. So the idea was to have someone be a spokesperson for kids writing um, and for kids in reading. And what, what happened is then, so of course I got in all the newspapers, I was on Martha Stewart. Like if I was just John Sheska talking about reading is good for you, it was like, eh. But it's the ambassador. That's right. So it was like I was the same guy I was a month before, but now I'm like popping out of the audience on Martha Stewart. And we were like just standing at her table talking about getting kids reading. That's amazing. Yeah. Now getting kids reading is one thing, hooking them. Yeah. Where we're, where we're seeing still big challenges. I mean, yep. you're doing a great job hooking them with the, yep. with the stuff that they love. What we're seeing challenges is when, and for various reasons, and I love your take on it, yeah. is on keeping them hooked. Yeah. Like into middle school and into high school. Now YA is doing a really good job. They're sort of handing them off yeah. that middle grade yep. and YA thing. But for boys especially, we start to bleed a lot of readers uh, at a yeah. certain age, that 12, 13, 15 range. Yep. Why? What's happening there? I don't know, man. It's still, it's such a mystery of a problem. Some of it's developmental. Some of it's even scientifically biological that boys develop later. Mm -hmm. So they get into this weird spiral of they're not successful at reading, so they read less. Mm -hmm. and my son was like that, he just developed later. Um, and some of it's social, like it's not cool to be a reader in a lot of schools if you're a guy. Um, but I think the thing to do is, is to make lifelong readers. Like if you can get kids to see this is about pursuing your interests. Mm -hmm. And then the overlay with the school stuff too, it's like my son thought every book was just a school assignment. Yeah. Which is like a terrible thing. And I said, no, no, you can just read a book if you want. But he actually told me, he said, why would I read another book? I'm going to have to answer some questions and write a paper. <laughs> it is true. There is this, there is this uh, sense for a lot of readers that 
that that uh, reading is a is a classroom project. Yep. So it's work. Yep. And we've done a terrible job in schools of, of doing that. I mean, there's a great writer here in the California area um, who wrote this book called Read Aside. Um, oh man, I just blanked on his name. But man, it's a beautiful book about. And it's just what it says, like, read aside. We kill kids' interest in reading yeah. by just assigning or taking a book like The Hunger Games and having, you know, three weeks of tearing it apart where kids just go like, oh, no, I hate that book. Yeah. <laughs> I loved reading it. Yeah. I didn't want to analyze it to death. Yeah. Sometimes it's better not just to think about it. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that's driving a lot of interest in books, though, is the um, sort of uh, film adaptations. And there seems to be a real yeah. feeding of Hollywood on the books that start to break through. And I think they're getting better now at sort of sensing... Even before the book is broken, they'll, they'll sometimes option a film even before it's oh, in the yeah. marketplace. Yeah. Uh, you know, that this one is one, that, and then all of a sudden you've got this sort of multi platform approach where kids are seeing it not only as a book, but as a movie and as maybe even other elements, you know, whether it's a yeah, video yeah. game or something. No, I'm actually I'm a huge fan of multimedia mm -hmm. um, or presenting the story in all these different ways. Yeah. So, Truck Town now is just on TV around the world and it's going to be Nickelodeon next year. Uh -huh. But, but I think kids now expect that. They want the book, the toy, and they can like live in all those worlds. Yeah. And now great television is happening uh, that Netflix is getting into and Google and Amazon TV. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's really kind of brilliant. Um, and Frank got options, which is kind of crazy. That's and great. Brad I mean, Pitt's going to be Frank. He, really? He told me. <laughs> there you go. Maybe. <laughs> I, believe, I, I believe that for a minute. Oh, you did, because uh, yeah. I'm the ambassador. Uh, yeah. uh, you, you have credibility with me. Uh, the, you know, the other thing is when I first I got to know you with The Stinky Cheese Man. That was the first yeah. book I really yeah. you know, got to know who John Cheska was. And it was such a crazy, you know, yeah. divergent kind of title. It was really yeah, fun. Yeah. And it took food in another place, certainly took cheese and anything with the word stinky in it. <laughs> nice. People, kids seem to like gravitate yeah. towards. Oh, man, I love it. So stinky is now um, like 22, 23 years yeah. it's been out there. That's amazing. And now people come up to me. I was just at the Texas Library Association Festival. Um, and, you know, like these 25, 30 year olds coming up to me saying like, I read that book every day in third grade. Yeah. It changed my life. It kind of spooks me out. Yeah. But it's just, it's so, it's actually just crazy heartwarming in the best way. Yeah, what I, what I, the reason that I bring up Sinky Cheese, because it has been that long, and yet yeah. you uh, treat these books and uh, this, you know, a new series or something with the same enthusiasm that, that you did for all of your books. You, oh, yeah. you, you seem to maintain, if not, if any, I mean, if an increasing level of enthusiasm as you go because you oh, find good. new things to be excited about. Yeah. Uh, how does it continue to stay so exciting for you as a, as a writer and as a kid's journalist and as a kid's... Oh, character? that's a great question. Um, you know what? I never even thought about that I would be any less excited because it's, it's the same for me where I think, like with the Frank Einstein, I just thought, oh man, I can actually use all this stuff I know about science. Um, oh, because I actually went to school and studied uh, pre-med and I got really far along thinking I could be a doctor. My yeah. mom was a nurse. She told me it'd, it'd be fine. Probably could have been. No, man, I'd be a terrible <laughs> doctor. I really, I'm a little squeamish. <laughs> and That's plus, a I, yeah, it's a problem. And I don't like sick people, and hospitals creep me out. So maybe not the best career choice. Yeah. But I love the science. I love like figuring out how the world worked. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of true of all this stuff. And I love just revealing a little of that to kids yeah. in this book world. Yeah. And kind of even the writing thing, because I started out and got a MFA at uh, Columbia and Brooklyn College together and thought, you know, I'll be like that novel writing guy. I'll write like the next Catch-22 or I love Thomas Pynchon. Like that was my ideal. Uh, but then I just found my audience when I started teaching second grade. I so, realized, here's the guys. So I had this conversation earlier. So this other yeah. pathway opened up for you and, and you had a vision, a different vision. Yeah. And a lot of people become fixated on those visions and aren't necessarily open to the sort of new paths that might oh, open yeah. to them. But you, you felt, you felt the sort of motion and went with it. Yeah. Um, was there ever like a concern that you were going down the wrong path, or did it always just feel right? Oh yeah, I think my mom and dad and my father-in-law just said like all together like, that's kind of nice, but you're going to be miserable your whole life. Yeah. And that was like my father-in-law's advice to my wife, uh, just before we got married took her out and said like, oh, he's a nice enough guy, but man, you're gonna be scrounging your whole life. Like, I think I got a lot of that from people who said like, yeah, don't be a writer, that's, gonna, that's too hard. But it was just such a thing, man. It just was like, it just satisfied me in so many ways. Yeah. 
And when it finally came together that I found the audience that loved this kind of short, funny, crazy, smart stuff, uh, it was so gratifying. So for the original stuff, like Three Pigs and Stinky Cheese, we got turned down everywhere for like a solid year. Because I was submitting manuscripts, nobody liked those. And then I met Lane Smith, we submitted stuff together and they really hated it. Because the artwork looked too creepy and unusual. Uh, and sophisticated we got a lot. They thought kids wouldn't get it. But man, it was so much fun when that stuff, from the beginning, Three Pigs went crazy. Um, and teachers and librarians and you as you know like kids got it mm -hmm. kids saw stinky and just it changed like their world and or thinking about what a book could be yeah, so when you're sitting there and people are saying no and you're thinking well maybe this isn't gonna work what is yeah. it that keeps you going thinking no this is gonna work I got something I believe in it I think it was honestly that strength of having been in a classroom and interacted with a group of kids to really know them in the in the most true way. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people who don't know kids will just say like, oh, I love kids. It's like, no, I mean, they're gross sometimes and weird and stupid, but they're also incredibly smart. Um, and you see what they're capable of. So I think it was that thing that kept me going and I knew that they would understand all of this stuff. And kind of what I was doing, I know I'm probably revealing all my secrets here, is just like taking my tastes in like metafiction, because I love guys like Pynchon, uh, Borges, or Cervantes, like some of the early stuff that was writing about writing. Uh -huh. uh, Tristram Shandy was my favorite book still. And I just blatantly stole those techniques of a disjointed narrative, a blank page, characters that disappear, and brought it to second graders. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, that's and a, then to see like, like meeting with you guys like in third grade, and you see that in the book. Right. Yeah, it's amazing. You, you got to be careful about revealing that now because with the Pharrell lawsuit and everything, maybe they could like, come get <laughs> That's you. That's right. Yeah. Well, hopefully yeah. it's been long enough for <laughs> yeah. Tristram Shandy. Well, kids ask me all the time, like, can you do that with fairy tales? Yeah. yeah or well, Battle kind of... Bunny is the latest one that was so transgressive where Mac Barnett and I took like in a sweet existing picture book and then just like destroyed it with a Sharpie. Yeah. Oh, it's great. <laughs> so yeah. we had to write our own right, to destroy course. it. Of course. <laughs> You know, I found out something really interesting about you um, that I did not know before this conversation, that you went to a military academy Yeah, yeah. in high school, which just doesn't work <laughs> when I'm looking at you and talking to you right now, but it's obviously something that affected you. Well, how did that all happen? Yeah, well, well it kind of was a nice progression because I had gone to Catholic schools for years before, and I think I needed more structure. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, I just happened to fall into it because uh, I grew up in Flint, Michigan, and the school system wasn't great there. My dad was a principal, he knew that. So we just shopped around for schools where I got scholarship money. And my older brother had gone for a year, but it was like I was telling you, I probably should have done a little more research because I just thought like, oh, it'll be like a sleepaway school, it'll be fun. And I didn't know we were like gonna be marching to breakfast and wearing uniforms every day. In the rain, like in the snow, it was insane. Yeah. And you're right though, it just, it definitely shaped my personality because I'm not really a military kind of guy. But I got some of the best teaching there. Incredible math teachers, phenomenal science teachers. We had the guys who were writing the textbooks, like Jurgensen and Donnelly, everyone had that math book. Uh, and that was my algebra teacher. He was this guy who could write equations on the blackboard backwards over his head while he was sitting down. And we were just like, man, if he can do that, yeah. we should be able to do it just looking at We can at march it. in the rain. Yeah, we can we march can in the that. rain yeah, for yeah. that, yeah. Exactly. So you've, uh, as your role as ambassador, you've had a chance to meet so many other great writers. I mean, you already are friendly with so many. There's a cadre of you out there that know yeah, and support yeah. each other. Uh, but who are the writers? You mentioned a few already, but who are the writers that have influenced you the most? I mean, including not just your, I would love you yeah. know, some of the old stuff, but some of your contemporaries too. Well, some of the older stuff is definitely like those original guys, like from the Ursula Nordstrom era, uh, those writers she found, like Crockett Johnson. His, I mean, I read The Carrot Seed again every couple days just because it's so beautifully conceived. Um, it also speaks to me, it's just that kid who plants the carrot seed, everyone tells him it's not going to grow up, and it grows up. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. And he just wheels it off, kind of without rubbing it in anyone's face, but he just knew. Um, God, E.B. White. Or it's, honestly, I think I bring more of my, um, 
Well, no, that's not true. Because there's Tommy Unger, who I love his right. stuff. Like the crazy surrealism of Papa Snap. Yeah. Or just the beauty of his picture books. Um, but honestly, I bring more of my uh, sensibility of the adult fiction that I like to read. Like Kafka. I mean, I would tell my second graders Kafka stories. And they were great at them because they'd say, or I'd tell them, like, yeah, a guy wakes up and he's a bug. And he doesn't know what happened. And they're going, wow. Yeah, I knew something was going on in schools when my son tweeted the other day that something was Kafkaesque. Did he? And he's really? in seventh grade. Wow. And I thought, nice. Do you have any idea? I mean, it's the Batman trailer and something yeah, else is Kafkaesque. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but he somehow can leave that in. It was strange. But that's like second graders can handle that. Yeah, they're getting there. And I kind of love that they they understood that sensibility. Um, or even my voice of like Three Pigs or Stinky or like Frank Einstein. I think that's honestly where I, I learned to bring real legit uh, learning and, and knowledge to kids and challenge them with it. Like if you don't understand magnetism, like work on it. Yeah. Don't just blow it off. Like think about it for a little while. Right, well, they, they certainly are, and you make it a lot easier because they're really fun to read. Oh, good. I'm glad to know that because, yeah. man, I just I may have bitten off more than I could chew where I've decided it's going to be a six-book series uh -huh. covering all of science. Maybe a little grandiose. Yeah. Man, and I forgot how difficult some scientific concepts are. Absolutely. So I'm starting with the smallest going to the largest. So I'm starting with, like, parts of an atom and antimatter. I mean, that sure. antimatter is mind-boggling. Yeah, that's, that's like, uh, just antimatter. Yeah. Like, that's pretty good. And the next stuff. book was energy. I mean, if you think about magnetism too long, your brain just explodes. Yeah. And then it's a different form of electricity. And electricity can be magnetism. The earth is magnetic. Your body is. It's just really good. Yeah, it is all very cool. And the way it's presented makes it even more so. And the fact that you're wading in so you can start to swim deeper in the yeah. science stuff. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we're pretty much over my head already, the stuff you're talking about. So. <laughs> well, these will yeah. help you. You yeah. study the diagrams. That's about where I am, by the way. <laughs> there's no questions. <laughs> yeah. And there's a chimpanzee. Yeah, it's really uh, fun. Who, who knows sign language. Yeah, it's very fun. It's really fun. And I appreciate you stopping by. And uh, it's an awesome festival to be at and oh, really happy to be I love coming to these. Yeah. Because it, it brings you this audience, too that also reminds you to keep the books so they appeal to a, that whole crew. Like you want mom and dad excited about it. Uh, and you want the kid to just go like, oh man, yeah, a book with robots mm -hmm. explaining science. I want that. And when you see energy in books in the same sentence, that's a great thing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, thanks so much, John Chester. No, my pleasure. Pleasure to have you Glad here. Glad you're here. Thanks. And congratulations on everything. Oh, thanks. Thank you.